What's up guys, Handish here, and today we have some very, very exciting Shadowkeep stuff to jump in and talk about. Of course, this week is Gamescom, and so we are going to be getting a lot of news. Shortly after this video, we're supposed to be getting a cinematic reveal of some sort, so I'll keep you posted on that one. Be sure to lock it in here on the channel. For now though, we get some new gameplay of Shadowkeep's finisher moves, and of course, we can see some of the new locations, weapons and stuff like that in the gameplay. We get a look at new mods in Armor 2.0, a more in-depth look at perks that we're going to see in the artifact, the reveal of a new exotic, the Assassin's Cowl for the Hunter, so we'll cover what that does in a moment, and we get a little bit of information about some of the activities and things that we'll be doing on the moon, including Nightmare Hunts, which appears to be one of the new activities. We can see the moon on the director, and yeah, generally, there is some pretty exciting stuff to take a look at. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, a rating really helps me out, but otherwise, let's get into it. So in a couple moments time, I'll actually run the clip so you guys can see what Bungie have to say about all of this content, but initially, some things to take a look at. We've got a bunch of finishing moves in action in the game. And so there were a bunch of different animations and stuff going on here, and from this build, we can see that these finishing moves do use super energy. So it kind of gives you a preview of how much energy it's going to use. You can actually see it consuming that energy as the player completes the finisher. So it's definitely going to be a thing. And in a moment, we'll talk about how different finisher perks can actually consume more energy. And so there is going to be some variation there, which is pretty cool. But outside of the super energy required, there is no other cooldown for these. The Bungie devs also confirmed that all three of the finishers will be unlocked upon the launch of Shadowkeep. So we will kind of get instant access to these new abilities. And yes, you may have noticed some kind of new areas and things going on inside of the gameplay here, as well as new weapons and gear. But one of the really interesting things is that we can see a Nightfall Strike here, and it does appear to be in that kind of hidden space that was found on Io. That's something that popped up after Season of Opulence launch, you may remember. There is a massive hidden space. Well, it looks like it's going to be a piece of Shadow Keep content after all. At least one new strike confirmed via this gameplay. But here we can see a character with the new artifact. And so we get a better look now at what the UI for this is going to be like. And obviously we just get a few frames here, but there is what's listed as a class item mod called Thunder Coil, grants bonus damage for all arc melee abilities and refunds super energy on finisher final blows. And it does say artifact unlocked, so it looks like there'll be a few different kind of systems here that we'll have to figure out. But that's just an example of one bonus. We can also see arc battery, which grants an overshield and reduce cooldown during activation for all arc class abilities. On top of this, Oppressive Darkness, causing damage with a Void Grenade, adds a Weaken effect to enemies. So that's some kind of debuff. And then we've got the Heavy Finisher, where finishers generate heavy ammo, which requires one half of your super energy. And the devs did confirm that this will generate a brick of heavy ammo for everybody in your fire team, and that includes things like raids, strikes. And so obviously, the benefits of this definitely scale, but so do the costs, right? It requires one half of your super energy, so that's pretty crazy stuff. And then we can see, when these are unlocked via the artifact, they do turn into mods, so they can be equipped onto pieces of armor. So the heavy finisher right here is on the Dreambane Cloak, and this is the new hunter armor set for the moon on Shadowkeep. A couple of other bonuses we can see, so anti-barrier rounds, shield-piercing rounds designed to bypass combatant defenses, which are strong against barrier champions. And you can get these for different weapons, so anti-barrier hand cannon. Bungie are definitely approaching the RPG style of the game, and, as I said before, it's definitely good to get a look at this when we talk about Armor 2.0, initially because there are some perks that are going to unlock via the artifact, and they're really going to push out the sandbox capabilities that we'll have in Shadowkeep, and so when you combine this with Armor 2.0, I certainly think personally that things start to look a lot more interesting and exciting. Speaking of interesting and exciting, Hunters, pay attention. We have the Assassin's Cowl. This is a new helmet. Now you see me, now you don't is a pretty cool flavor text right there, but it comes with Vanishing Execution, and it appears that we do have a different kind of preview of the intrinsic bonus for exotics here, so it's automatically kind of on the UI, but... With this exotic, defeating a guardian with a melee attack or a combatant with a finisher will grant invisibility and restore a portion of health and shields. So health and shields back on melee with an instant kind of invis effect. Definitely interesting, could have some pretty cool uses. We spoke about it at the weekend, but yeah, turns out we've definitely got a new exotic here. What we spot here is pretty cool. So initially on the director, we can see the Eververse icon and the Vex icon in the tray on the top left, so perhaps that Vex icon is linked to the Vex invasions, but we can see the Scarlet Keep is a new strike on the moon. Investigate the recently erected Scarlet Keep and discover its dark purpose. And of course we can see the different areas on the moon. It's really cool because of course we didn't have these maps back in D1, but we can spot Archer's Align, the Anchor of Light, 
Hellmouth and all of the original D1 locations. There's also a new activity, the Nightmare Hunt, Servitude, so it appears there will be different ones for different enemies perhaps. Defeat the Nightmare of Zydron, the Gate Lord. That's a really cool throwback to D1 right there. It also classes as a weekly challenge. We can see it's got modifiers and stuff. And there are different difficulty levels. So we've got Adept, as well as Hero and Legend. So we can see the modifiers and things like that increase right there. So Air Superiority, that mod's coming back and we've got Champion's Overload, Champion's Barrier, and the Torment of Zydron. Some of those modifiers, actually, you'll have recognized from what we saw on the artifact. And so certain mods are actually going to make you quite a bit more powerful against certain modifiers that we'll find in activities. And so that sounds really cool. And right here we get just a little bit of gameplay on the Hellmouth. The character has the buff Unstable Essence there, which is cool as well. And so there we go, guys. That's a breakdown of everything we saw on the Xbox stage for Destiny 2 Shadowkeep. Once again, we're getting a cinematic reveal shortly. It may actually be here by the time you watch this video. If it is, you can click on the end screen of this video or follow the link in the description to check it out. But now I'm going to play the entire segment from Bungie on stage at Xbox, get a few further developer insights and things like that. But for now, thank you for tuning in. I hope you guys have found the video interesting. Really cool to get a better look at some of these things. If you're new around here, be sure to hit subscribe to keep up to date with everything related to the game. But otherwise, thank you as always for tuning in and I will catch you all very soon. Finishers are very simply another uh, element of the combat, another tool that you're able to take into Destiny Combat that lets you finish off an enemy with a flourish when they're at low health. Mm. So you're going to see them get this kind of glow and a dot appear over their head, and you're going to rush in by hitting the finisher button, and you're just going to eliminate them right Look away. Look at the style! It's awesome. That it feels amazing. super great. Very satisfying. Yeah, and so I see there's one for, you know, there's one for a hunter, one for a warlock, one for a titan. Is there one for every subclass as well within that? There's, there's uh, different class-oriented finishers, okay, and yeah. everyone, when Destiny 2 Shadowkeep launches, will get all three of those finishers. Ooh, yeah. very Ooh. exciting. And what I'm noticing here is while we're playing, uh, obviously we're cutting through a lot of footage here, but it doesn't seem like there's any cooldown between finishers either. You can kind of just, can you rampage through and just finish, oh, yeah. finish, finish? Oh yeah, you can rampage. Ooh. Okay. However, there are more things you can do with finishers aside from just eliminating the enemy. Yes. With Armor 2.0, we're taking a lot of customization and RPG elements and inserting them into the action game. Okay. So once you start digging that system, more things become possible as finishers. All of a sudden, you can say, hey, I'm going to take my artifact. I'm going to earn one of these mods at the end. Yeah. It's a collectible now. It's not a consumable. Uh -huh. And that one right there, probably my favorite one, if you finish an enemy with that mod equipped, you will spawn a heavy ammo brick for your entire fire team. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> but it will cost half of your super. Oh, wow. okay, that's a heavy cost as well. You don't get everything for free in life. Uh, There's always a catch. I imagine doing that in the raid, though, and you're like, oh, yeah. Well, see, this right? is the thing. Now we don't have heavy ammo since. We've, you know, we're creeping back in. I'm a big fan of that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and yeah, combat mods are, that sounds like a really good way to, you know, if you want to spice up your gameplay a little bit, you can add a combat mod in instead. Maybe sacrifice a bit more utility, uh, you know, maybe be less selfish is what I'm thinking. <laughs> well, there's totally selfish ones too. Oh, okay, yeah, go yeah, on, go yeah. on. There's, yeah. there's ones that will recharge your health. Oh. There's the exotic, the Assassin's Cow that'll make you go invisible. So a lot of oh, yeah, play that's... styles open up when you start looking at the finisher mods and putting them around. Wow, and it just seems like the whole system is really just geared towards personalization of your character. Which yeah, is... we're opening up a whole new world of options that let you build yes. the perfect monster killing machine, as we've been saying in the studio. Delicious. So if you have a guardian, or if you have yet to create a guardian, you can create a hero for this game that it's really a reflection of who you are. It fights the way you want to fight. It looks the way you want to look. Uh, we even just took a look at some of the different options that we have in the game for mm -hmm. selecting your difficulty so that you can go in and you can play Destiny exactly the way you want to play it. You can earn extra rewards for taking bigger risk. If you stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with your enemies and you use a finishing move, you can, what were some of the things we were talking about before? You, you can, can charge your health. You can go invisible. You can spawn away. ammunition for you oh. and your team. Yeah, and more. Or beyond that. And that doesn't come without risk, does it? Are you invulnerable when you do these things? You are moves? not. Oh. You are not invulnerable. I, so I, when I you've got that one guy on your fire team who just can't help himself and has to do a finishing move, and then he dies, and you're just, thanks for ruining my flawless Well, run. it's exciting. You see, you see that glow across exciting. the battlefield, and like, if I get that guy, I can get that, oh, that rocket, I need it. And so you rush across, and but yeah. Yeah, can it's you do a risk it on reward. the really big bosses? You can't do it on the really big bosses. Okay. Oh. I'll accept you can it. do it on everything below. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but speaking of personalization, you're also here to talk about what players can do to turn that personal challenge up to 11. Deej, can you tell us the secret to creating the elitist of elite guardians? I think it's really about making sure that it fits the way you like to fight. 
Yeah. Uh, so if you're the type of uh, player that likes to get up close and personal with the punching, you know, if you got that Titan sensibility <laughs> yeah, about yeah. yourself, <laughs> there you go, exactly. mm -hmm. uh, finishing moves are going to be exactly the thing that you're going to want to do. Uh, if you like to hang back, if you're the sniper, if you're not really into the risk reward thing, mm -hmm. the nice thing is that some of these benefits are shareable across the team. Nice. So somebody who rushes in and does a finishing move could drop heavy ammo on the floor to share with their friends. Yeah. So that destiny is all about teamwork. It's all about playing with the other people that are on your fire team, getting to know your friends and the way they play, the way you play really complements the way they play. That's the ultimate team right there. I feel like Leah seems to be really judgmental. I don't think I'm quite up to the challenge. Right? <laughs> but what do you guys think? Does that sound pretty ace, you big Destiny fans? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's what we want to hear. Um, so I suppose most importantly, we need to find out when can they get their hands on charity? Well, I keep forgetting you're so hey, loud. Every time I ask that question, you're no one hears me. <laughs> it's not I'm a like, yes. When can we play the game? <laughs> play the game on October 1st. Okay. Yes. That's not so, so long. Far. That's not so long. It's so, so far. Well, it's <laughs> really long for Leah. Not I so know. far. For Counting else. every minute. <laughs> uh, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs>